a rare book, the true and thrilling story of Sadhu Sundar Singh, the apostle of the bleeding heart. This is chapter three of this book. And this book has Siddhar's note and signature on the inside, which I will share. And this was written in Melbourne, Australia, in 1920. Chapter 3. From his birth to his near birth, the light of reason cannot give life to my soul. Jesus alone can make me truly live. One glance of his can make my spirit whole. Arise and shine, O oh Jesus, on this longing heart of mine. At home, Siddhar Singh's father, Sher Singh, bore the honorable title of Sirdar, was a sheikh by caste and descent, and one of the most prominent and opulent landholders of the Petulum State, owning a large estate in the country town of Rampur, near Later, Hena. His two elder brothers, unlike other young men of their martial clan, stayed at home managing and taking care of the family estate, while the rest of the male members of the family pursued the military profession, some of them holding positions of considerable prominency and distinction in the various Sikh states of the Punja. The Sikhs, that's S I K H S are those thought with and warlike inhabitants of the Punja with whom fighting is a profession and loyalty to the British Jra, that's R-A-Y. That's R-A-J, their family tradition. The Sheikh soldiers are known all over the world for their bravery, who never hesitate to sacrifice themselves for a righteous cause. Siddhar Shamdar Sikh, KC, is one of Siddhar's cousin brothers, while one of his uncles, Siddhar Natha Sikh, by name, is the commander-in-chief of the native forces in one of the leading Sikh's states, the Punjab. Siddhar was born on the 3rd of September, 1889, in his father's native village of Rampur. He was very dearly attached to his mother, who, besides being devoutly religious, was also a woman of refinement and education, a worthy example in every way of the true womanhood of India. It is perfectly obvious, says a great student of human nature, that men do necessarily absorb out of the influence in which they grow up, something which gives a complexion to their whole after character. And we find it so wonderfully true in Siddhar's case. The spiritual influence his mother engendered and fostered a deeply religious spirit in her beloved son and made him the devoted and devout soul that he is. Among the Hindus, as a rule, it is the women of the household who perform all the religious rites and ceremonies and to whom is left entirely the care of the gods and the gurus. Hence, it is only very rarely that one comes across a Hindu boy of Siddhar's turn of mind. His daily life was so closely knit up with his mother's that he was generally seen tripping like a colt at her heels wherever she went. He would follow her in her daily visits to the gods, there to rub his little forehead at the temple door to offer sacrifice of fruit or perfume sweets to the priest and to garlic and anoint the medallic deity. Especially, he never failed to accompany her on her monthly or bi-monthly rounds to the priest counselors of questions of religions and Loved to sit with her mother for hours at their feet, listening to the scholarly discourses of the profundities of Hinduism. Besides these occasions, visits to the Proahats, the priests or counselors, the mother had constant interviews 
with the Satus, holy men, some of whom live far away from the city out in the jungle. Siddhar must have been greatly impressed by the simple and astute lives of these devotees of religion, who evidently his mother seemed to have a great regard for them. She would address them in terms of deepest respect, plead for their prayers on her behalf and on her family, and consider herself greatly honored if they once lifted their eyes and looked into her face. The apparency of some of these sannyasis, says Siddhar, so simple and serene, worked like a charm on my mind, and I began to entertain from now a desire to be something like them. We should notice here carefully how God had already started working in Siddhar's heart, although he little knew at the time that his desire to imitate the Siddhu's life was only the beginning of a longing which later on developed into a passion for saving souls.